Dear parents and carers, welcome to our first Heathcote School parent information event. In this presentation, you'll find a wide range of information to ensure that you are in the best possible position to support your child in achieving their best at school. My aim for every child in year 10 is for them to fulfill their true potential, giving themselves the best possible chances in life, whatever path they might choose. Alongside our school ethos of encourage, challenge, succeed, we have developed a specific ethos for Key Stage 4 students. This core ethos is to encourage students to challenge themselves to be their best every day, to create and make the most of opportunities, to build positive relationships based on mutual respect and to strive for excellence in everything they do. We've all been through a very tough year and school has not and still is not quite the same. Every child in year 10 needs to make the most of every minute of the school day. They cannot afford to waste a minute. They must maximise their learning and close those gaps created by lockdown. It won't be easy, but I have every confidence that together we can do it and look forward to them making great progress as we move on through the academic year. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce you to our senior leadership team and two other key support teams in school. Firstly, we have Miss Hillman, our head teacher, who most of you will be very familiar with. We then have Mr Abbott and Mr Gallacher, who lead on the quality of education provided at Heathcote. Miss Close, Deputy Head in charge of behaviour, attendance and ethos, and Mr Hutchins, who is our safeguarding students lead. Then we have Miss Argarakis, who leads on data and pupil progress, and Miss Elmy, who is leading on pupil leadership and parental engagement. Our special educational needs team are led by Miss Gardner, with her deputy Senko, Miss Smith, who leads on year 10 SCN support. We then have our pastoral support team, which is led by Miss Austin. Some of you will be familiar already with Mr. Travis, who is leading on punctuality and working hard to support students in improving their timekeeping to school. Miss Warden, our home school support worker, who monitors the transition process for new pupils who are starting at Heathcote and also looks after uniform and equipment monitoring and also community detentions. And finally, last but not least, we have Miss Blackwood, our IEU manager. She's in charge of weekly detentions, IEU reports and is key in identifying any negative patterns of behaviour that are developing in certain students. Next, I'd like you to please meet our fantastic Year 10 tutors. My tutors are going into their third year with their tutor groups, which has really allowed them to build strong relationships with their tutees. And although we currently don't have tutor periods due to the recovery timetable, we are really hoping to re-establish this in some form in the new year. So, over to the tutors. Hi, I'm Miss Hannigan, form tutor for Turn 1. It's so strange not to see you every day, and I certainly miss our chats during tutor time. 
However, it appears you are flying along without me. Attendance is 94.25% and you have achieved as a group over 160 praise points so far. Well done, Ten One. I'm so proud of you. Here's hoping we get to see each other more regularly in the new year. As well as being part of the Year 10 tutor team, I'm also second in charge of the English department. In collaboration with the Director of English and the rest of the English team, we aim to provide an engaging, varied and exciting programme of English at both Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4. It's important at this stage of their education that they are continually revising previous content, especially Romeo and Juliet and the four poems that they were taught in Year 9. Independent learning is vital for success at GCSE and it is so important that all pupils are accessing and completing the homework set on Google Classroom. On this slide, you can see an overview of the GCSE curriculum and the exams they will be required to sit in Year 11. As a department, we're delighted with the way the majority of our Year 10 students have settled back into lessons. Furthermore, they've shown both enthusiasm and motivation in class, which will have a direct and positive effect on the progress they make in their studies. Pupils with any questions regarding the English curriculum or any problems they feel the need to discuss with me can find me in room 215 in the Year 8 corridor when I'm not teaching. My email address can also be found on the school website and I'm always happy to respond to queries from both parents and pupils. Good afternoon. My name is Miss Reid and I work alongside the Director of English as progress lead teacher in English, alongside being your form tutor. I'm truly impressed by your mature and focused start to this academic year, following such a long absence from school due to COVID. And I'm really impressed with how focused you are and the general behavior and uniform that I have seen in the playground and around the school buildings. If you do need to find me and something is pressing or urgent, your parents should have my email address, which is on the school website. Or I can be found in the English staff room on the top floor if there is a, something that is a very pressing matter. So, if we are going to talk about punctuality, my real focus at the moment is punctuality to your lesson after lunch. Punctuality to school in the morning is generally very good and punctuality to one periods one and two are also generally very prompt. However, we really must improve our punctuality after lunch. We understand that school is a very different place since COVID and that you do need to socialise, but we also have lots of learning to catch up on after losing teaching time. I know that you all want to succeed. Therefore, we must ensure that we arrive on time to our lesson. Arriving late to lesson means that you miss the do now activity, any recap, and you miss the introduction to that lesson, which means you are already missing out on valuable learning time, which will impact your learning for that lesson and preceding lessons. If you are late to lesson, the sanction is a 30 minute detention in the dining hall. However, the biggest reward of all for turning up on time and being prepared for your lesson is that you achieve the very best GCSE results, which will open many doors for you and give you lots of choices after year 11. Thank you for listening. Hello year 10, it's Miss Thomas here, form tutor to 10-3 and lead teacher for Key Stage 3 in English. When I'm not teaching, I can usually be found in the English office on the top corridor or in H203 when it's empty. 10-3. I'm really missing our form time in the morning and seeing you all every day. I love seeing you around school, working hard and making me proud of our form. I know things are hard at the moment with the COVID restrictions, but keep it up because I promise your hard work will pay off in year 11. We have 199 praise points as a form at the moment meaning we are holding on to that top spot. Amazing work. Keep it up.
I just want to leave you all with a quick note on uniform. Across the year group, the standard is really high and most of you look really smart. But just to remind you, keep your shirts tucked in, your jewellery to a minimum with just one simple stud in each ear, and ensure that you have the correct footwear. In addition, lots of you aren't wearing your lanyards or aren't wearing them properly. They are part of your identity as a year group and carry important information, so please ensure you keep these round your neck at all times. Thanks again Year 10 and keep up the great work. Welcome everybody. My name is Mr Chambers. I am a full-time PE teacher at Heathcote School and one of my responsibilities outside of my department is being a form tutor for 10-4. If you ever need to find me, I am normally in H10, which is the PE office on the ground floor, close to step number three. Today, I would like to talk to you all about the topic of behavior for learning. If you are aiming to be the best pupil that you can at Heathcote School, this is something that you should try to be the best at. To be the best pupil that you can at Heathcote School, you will need to meet certain expectations. You will not find reasons to be off from school. You will be on time for your lessons. You'll also bring essential equipment to school every day. You will take pride in your work and do it as well as you possibly can. You'll also do all of your homework and hand it in on time. You will take pride with your own books and those of the school, including other lesson materials. You will not try to waste your time and that of other pupils or teachers by behaving in an irresponsible manner during lessons. An example of this last point, keep the same high standards that you would regularly use for your subject tutor as you would for a tutor or teacher who has come to cover your lesson in the event your normal teacher is not present. If you can carry out these expectations, you will be well on your way to have the best life chances in the future. Finally, I would like to finish by congratulating my tutor group 10-4 who, who have achieved 96.5 0.7% attendance, putting them in first place within their cohort. They have also achieved second place for praise points with a combined total of 188 points. Hello, I'm Mrs Ismail, the form tutor of 10.5. I'm also an English teacher and I can be found in H204, which is on the top floor of the main building or I can also be found in the English office. This year has by no means been easy for anybody, especially for you, but your resilience combined with your determination to learn during these unprecedented times has been so impressive. As teachers of Heathcote, we have been so proud of our year 10 students. So well done for being responsible and for being willing to adapt to changes quickly. Well done for being supportive towards one another and well done for having a positive attitude towards your own learning. During these difficult times, you have proved just how committed you are towards your education. A few reminders about break, lunch and corridor behaviour. For your safety, the safety of your family, friends, staff in school and members of the public, it is essential that we all follow the rules. Please remember, it is compulsory to wear masks and that these need to be on whilst you're transitioning between lessons, as well as being on during lunch and break. Remember to maintain your social distancing all the way home, including whilst you're waiting for public transport. Remember that there is no physical contact, and this includes hugging and high fives. And remember that you are not permitted to be sharing food or drink. Whilst at lunch, you must remember to sit in your designated seat. Remember, you are not able to leave your classrooms at any time to use the toilet 
or for any other reason other than an emergency situation. Please use the toilets at break and lunch only. If you don't follow these rules, it will be logged as a behaviour incident and parents will be contacted. During these very unusual times, you are all doing extremely well in adhering to the new rules around school. Please remember that it is important that you are taking care of yourself, especially as it relates to your emotional well-being. Staff in Heathcote are here to support you and always speak to your tutor in the first instance if you have any concerns or problems. I hope you have a great day and an enjoyable Christmas break when it comes. Hello, I'm Miss Khan, form tutor of 106, alongside Miss Lamont. We're going to discuss the importance of attendance in year 10. But before that, just want to say you are doing great in following the new procedures around school. You can find me in room H201 or the English office. You can find Miss Lamont in the art rooms at the top of the main building. Why is it important to not miss school? Having a good education is important to ensure your child has the best opportunities in their adult life. They only get the chance to at school once and your child's future may be affected by not attending school regularly. If pupils do not um, attend regularly, um, they may struggle to keep up with schoolwork. If for any reason pupils are unable to attend, lessons are uploaded on Google Classroom. Um, they also might miss out on key events at school, missing the key information that they need for their everyday school life. National statistics show that poor attendance can have a profound effect on a child's attainment and achievement. Of pupils who miss more than 50% of school, only 3% manage to achieve five GCSEs from grades 4 to 9, including English and Maths. Of pupils who miss between 10% and 20% of school, only 35% managed to achieve five GCSEs from grade four to nine, including English and maths. Pupils who miss less than 5% of school, 73% achieve five GCSEs from grade four to nine, including English and maths. Currently, this is the attendance at Heathcote. Massive well done, year 10. You can see how well you're doing. This doesn't include any absences due to COVID. Target attendance for year 10 is 94% and above. And as you can see on the right hand side, four tutor groups have an attendance over 94%, which is great. If you are not able to attend for any reason, please ensure you complete work on Google Classroom. Remember, we are still awarding our ACE awards for 100% attendance. So attend every day to be in with a chance of winning a 25 pound voucher. Pupils in years 10 and 11 are set to two sets of target grades for the end of year 11 using Fisher Family Trust estimates. They are FFT 50 and FFT 20 estimates that are created using the performance achieved by similar pupils in previous years. FFT 20 is the more aspirational target using the performance of the 20th percentile of pupils in previous years, while FFT 50 uses the performance of the 50th percentile. Similar pupils are those with the same gender, month of birth and key stage two scores. Key stage four pupils receive five grades for each subject on their report. A challenge week grade, which is the grade achieved in their challenge week exam paper. A current grade, which is the level the teacher currently thinks the pupil is performing at a most likely grade, which is what the teacher feels the pupil will achieve at the end of the course, an effort grade and a homework grade. Hello, my name's Mr Byer. I'm the Director of Sixth Form at Heathcote and one of the Assistant Head Teachers. Over this presentation, I hope you find lots of information about what the Sixth Form at Heathcote has to offer and how we support our pupils onto their next steps and amazing destinations and also how we can support you to apply to the Sixth Form, which is an online process this year.
as you can see here, we're hugely proud of some individually outstanding achievements uh, from last year's Year 13 cohort. Um, and we supported not only our A-level students onto some top destinations, uh, Imperial University, studying medicine uh, at St Andrews University, and some on gap years who are now uh, undertaking their Oxford and Cambridge interviews as they uh, look to progress from their wonderful collection of A-stars they achieved last year but also at the bottom are BTEC business students who all achieved distinction star DD which is the equivalent of A star AA at A level and some of those have also gone on to start in the world of work at university um, and are also progressing to great things. The final thing on this slide is that we also offered two scholarships last year from the Reading Foundation and they were awarded £250 each to recognise the great work and the commitment they'd shown during the year. So there are lots of ways that Heathcote Sixth Form offer support and guidance to those destinations, whether it's apprenticeships or universities. And also there are some financial supports available as well. We also have a bespoke partnership with Leicester University where one student will be eligible for £2,000 scholarship. So hopefully this is a, a clue of the things that we're hoping that all our pupils will achieve in the sixth form and they can go on to lead successful and happy future lives. This slide really echoes uh, the previous slide um, but gives you a little bit more detail uh, in terms of our overall picture not just the individual successes. Um, you can see that 40% of those who went on to university went to really top destinations which we think now more than ever in the uncertain world ahead is, is really important and you can see from our previous Ofsted report that the careers guidance information employment opportunities uh, were really beneficial and more students than average went on to higher education or to apprenticeships. So so um, we've got a really great team with Miss Burnett, who's based in the sixth form, to offer that uh, support and guidance with lots of um, work experience links and opportunities to help pupils develop during their two years in the sixth form. We know in the sixth form that success isn't going to happen by itself and that part of being a successful university applicant or apprenticeship applicant is building a, a student experience that is beyond those three subjects or one BTEC subject studied. So we're really keen to embed a beyond the formal curriculum a wider offer and as you can see here that includes lots of different things to do with trips and expeditions, things like the National Career Service, the Duke of Edinburgh Award, um, leadership opportunities through the Ambassador Programme which is being led by Miss Elmy this year. Uh, we've got other enrichment opportunities like a thriving debate club our bar mock trial competition last year took us to the, the final uh, at Snaresbrook Crown Court where we lost out to the national finalists by just one point. We also have um, Sutton Trust, Social Mobility Foundation links uh, and lots of other enrichment opportunities for essay competition, attending lecture series and so on. And all of that we hope builds a really high set of aspirations for whatever pathway our pupils choose to go on to, um, whether that's Oxbridge and medicine, different career opportunities, um, and Mr Dolan's work with Gardner and Theobald for example give us loads of positive links with the construction industry as well. And finally, we're looking always to make sure we support the well-being of our pupil community and the wider community as well, looking at fundraising opportunities, charity events, um, and of course we've got access to the counselling service in school as well, um, and making sure that our pupils are, are well guided in everything that they do. One of the benefits of staying on at Heathcote Sixth Form rather than trying somewhere new is that the foundation of the, the lessons and the learning is also already built upon relationships between staff and pupils that already know one another. As you can see from these quotes, uh, staff here really do go above and beyond to build those positive relationships and to offer support and guidance for all our students. Uh, and we know, we know them really well, we know the journey they've been on and will continue to go on uh, to support them with their next steps. Additionally, as you're looking for maybe a fresh start in the sixth form and a new opportunity, we have our own uh, separate building as part of the main school. And I think that really offers us a slightly different identity and an opportunity to mix with new pupils as they come in from other schools. So we aim to have as many Heathcote applicants as possible this year. And we hope that there is a course for all of you to apply to, but we also recognize that there is a, an importance in mixing and meeting and socializing with new students from other places. And we hope that that mix of having uh, lessons and and opportunities with other students is also something really positive and will help give that sense of a new opportunity whilst also building on the positives of what we already know about your sons and daughters. 
we have three main pathways on offer in the sixth form. Uh, we have the full A-level pathway for which you'll need five grade fives as a minimum, but lots of individual subjects require a six in the required subject in order to get onto the A-level course. We also offer a mixture of A-level and BTEC, and that's worked really successfully this year with BTEC Business and the PCP, Professional Construction Practice course, to combine those business skills with the more creative uh, side. And we're trying to increase that offer next year as well. We then offer two full level three extended diploma courses. That's in BTEC Business and BTEC Sport. And finally, a level two City and Guild construction course, which sits alongside anyone needing to retake English and Maths and offers a really practical pathway into the trades uh, with Mr Edwards teaching them about uh, plumbing, plastering, bricklaying and so on. Uh, so we hope we've got a really good range of courses on offer, but please do familiarise yourself with the individual subject requirements on the prospectus and on our website. Hi, I'm Miss Burnett and I work in the careers team at Heathcote. This presentation is just to give you a little bit of information about the careers programme at Heathcote. Um, and it's a programme of events tailored to each stage of our pupils' learning journey. So that's from year seven when they join us and they start to think about careers and skills needed in the world of work and just just getting to know those ideas all the way through to years 12 and 13 when they may be making choices about employment, apprenticeships or going off to university. So in addition to careers education in the classroom, we also offer a number of other opportunities to our pupils. This includes one-to-one -one, um, information advice and guidance sessions, access to work experience placements, information about apprenticeships, um, industry insight day, so the opportunity to meet with employers um, and find out about specific industries and job roles, um, further and higher education taster days, um, open days at universities. We also link up with employers and unis to offer mentoring schemes and we can help with applications. So be that for university or for sixth form or even job applications, we can help um, pupils to um, develop their employability skills and um, practice interview techniques. So as you can see on this slide, Year 11 have some decisions to make about what to do after they finish secondary school. Um, government guidance states that they need to be in some form of education or training until they're 18. Um, so the options are um, to remain at Heathcote 6th form, to look at a college or possibly an apprenticeship. Um, the GCSE results do play a big part in this so in terms of what they go on to study next that will often be decided by their GCSE results um, so for example A levels and other level 3 courses will want them to have um, 5 or more grade 9 to 5s um, and then if for example you want to study a science you may need your GCSE in science to be higher. Um, so what we suggest is that students at this stage start making some plans about you know what ideally they'd like to do but also have some ideas of, of what they might call their backup plan or if if the grades don't come out quite as they expect um, what what they may choose to do instead. So as I said on the last slide, depending on GCSE results, that that kind of signifies the next level of education that students can go on to. Um, so um, in terms of A-levels, they're a level three qualification. So you can see here that the entry requirements are generally a minimum of five grade, five to nine or above, including maths and English. Um, there's a new qualification that came out in September 2020 called T-levels. Um, basically, a T-level is a vocational qualification with... Um, 80% classroom based learning and 20% on industry placement. It's the equivalent of three A levels, so it is level three um, and it sits alongside A levels, but as I say, it's a more vocational route. Um, entry requirements for those courses do depend on the further education provision, so you need to check specific details. 
um, so prospectuses, websites, etc. Um, the same with vocational qualifications. Now at college, the um, vocational qualifications, the levels are normally a level one entry level and a level two and three. Um, so depending on exam results, students usually have an option to go in at the appropriate level for them. And again, because there's so many different courses and entry requirements, it's best to check websites for details. In terms of apprenticeships, um, after GCSEs, then you would be looking at immediate, intermediate and advanced apprenticeships. Um, so this is a combination of being employed, um, going out to work for a few days a week and earning a wage, but also working towards a qualification. Um, the National Apprenticeship website has lots of information on this. I'm going to pass you the details of that website a bit later on. So this diagram kind of shows you a bit more clearly the different stages of education and the different levels of qualification. So you can see within secondary education you've got your GCSEs up in the sort of top left hand side and then below that you've got further education so that's college, sixth form um, and intermediate and advanced apprenticeships up to level three. Um, moving over onto the right hand side level four through to level eight this is your higher education so um, um, university routes and higher rates higher level and degree level apprenticeships as an alternative to um, full-time university. So here I've just given you some tips. Um, these are the kind of conversations that we all have in the one-to-one -one sessions with pupils. Um, if they know what they want to do, then it's really good just to kind of, you know, draw out of them some more information about that. What do they know about sort of the pathway that they're they would like to take have they looked at the skill sets required and what qualifications they need are they clear on you know what the role entails what they'll be earning what sort of hours they'll need to do and the working conditions um, and also kind of how realistic is it um, in terms of the job opportunities are are there lots of jobs out there in their chosen field or is it a dying kind of industry you know things are moving towards more automation um, so is it is it a job that's going to be affected by the future world of work um, if they don't know what they want to do then that's fine um, it's all right not to know at this age exactly what they want to do that's perfectly fine um, but what we would do is encourage self-awareness here so we would get them to think about their own strengths and their interests and their qualities what are they good at and um, what do they feel passionate about what would be important to them in a potential career do they want to travel etc um, how does it link to their subjects what subjects do they enjoy and why are their job roles linked to that that they can take that further um, and then hobbies and interest what what do they do outside what do they love what gets them up and gets them uh, motivated can they link that to the potential sort of pathways of, of work and career ideas? So I hope this presentation's been helpful and it's given you a bit of an overview into the work we do in school. Um, this last page, you've got my contact email address on here. Um, feel free to contact me with any questions relating to careers or progression or work experience, etc. Um, you can check the careers bulletins that are sent out on Google Classroom and Parent Mail. The sign up codes are on this screen for pupils to sign up to the google classrooms if they haven't done that already please get them to do so and then at the bottom there's just you know these are the most used go-to websites that i use in sessions with students i thought i'd share them with you um they're quite user friendly and there's loads of information on there thanks for listening i hope you found this presentation informative and useful. I would just like to add a few points. As you know, blended learning has become essential in the current climate and access to ICT equipment at home is now a necessity. We have supplied many students with laptops or Chromebooks. However, if due to a change in circumstances, your child is unable to access online learning in any format at home, please do let us know and we'll see what we can do. The Google Classroom app 
It is also very useful and easy to use and can be downloaded onto any smartphone or tablet. Please note that when taking part in live lessons, students' cameras should be switched on, but their microphones should be muted. Uh, your teachers will let you know if they wish you to do otherwise. Students should observe the same high standards of behaviour and respect for others when engaging in live online lessons as they would for a regular face-to-face -face classroom lesson. And students should be checking their Google Classroom on a daily basis. To finish, I'd just like to say that I'm really impressed with the way that Year 10 have handled the many changes and difficulties that have been forced upon us this year. They've, been, they've stepped up to the challenge and are showing excellent focus and resilience. I am proud to be their head of year and look forward to seeing them continue to grow into responsible young adults. So thank you for your time watching and listening to this presentation. Have a good two, last two weeks of term and enjoy your Christmas holiday.